Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me as I explore the amazing world of pens. And it is a global market. And thankfully, through places like Etsy and eBay and AliExpress and many others, we were able to participate in this global market. You see before you my result of my buying frenzy when the new 456 models came out uh, about a month or so ago on Etsy. So I got three and I did get a nice pouch which came with Hidden Path. I got one cat sticker, Amber's Paws. These pouches are just phenomenal. Many people sell these for like 10 bucks. And what's nice about the PenBBS ones is they put the PenBBS logo inside the pouch. Hopefully we can get to see it down there. So why did I get these three? Let's start with this one. This is Black Tortoise. When I first saw this, I think Doug had one. I said, I'd like to have a pen in, in Black Tortoise, so now I have one. It's black but it has some transparency to it you can see some of the feed and stuff it's just an amazing resin from that perspective nice and subtle with some interesting variations to it this is the one that came with that nice pouch and to me i just am mesmerized by this resin this is the third pen I have in this checkerboard design. I also have a I think a 480 but we'll double check and when we do some comparisons we'll bring out that pen. Yeah about one and a half turns to get the cap off and we'll see that excellent section which is the same material as Pen BBS is known for until we look at our third pen in the group. It's a very nice two-tone nib and they four five six two tone where the majority of the nib is uh, silver and then there's just a a gold border where that filigree is ah just a tastefully well done pen now we come to probably the more interesting pen of the group is this four five six it came in a metal box which uh, my theory is these metal boxes are uh, but bnny does to repackage what Pens might be her design or her influence. And of course, the ubiquitous Made in China, which has some regulations apparently have to do that. This is one where we have a white finial at the top, a white blind cap. When we take off the cap, we'll notice a white section. So this is where they have deviated from the same color throughout the pen. I think this resin is excellent, a resin I do not have. It will compare it to some similar ones like South Shore. And it also has what Pan BBS does on occasion, a very unique engraving on the nib. It's medium tipping and it looks fairly generous. Uh, my experience with Pan BBS mediums has been excellent. Smooth writer, wet. Uh, and we'll see if it has any softness or bounce to it. But So that's the three pens. A little bit of insight into why I bought them. Uh, they took um, a little bit of time to get here. They spent a lot of time making a 40-mile trip from uh, its arrival in uh, JFK to my house. But it eventually arrived. And it beat out a pen that I bought on eBay from a New Jersey seller who lives about 50 miles from here, and it's still in transit. I have no idea where it is and how it's, when it's going to show up. So welcome to the world of shipping in today's environment. So those are the three pens. We're going to explore them, and maybe ink up one to write with. I flush every pen I receive, new, old, it doesn't matter. In the early days, many, many years ago, I used to get a new pen, ink it up, and write with it, and 
sometimes it just wouldn't write consistently, it wouldn't write well. And then I realized that I needed to flush every pen. So that's what I do. So with these three pen BBS 456s, the black tortoise was the only one in which I was able to pull out the nib and feed out of the section. I don't unscrew it. I tried to pull it out first. And it's pulled out easily. Yeah, again, I have a pretty good idea of how much pressure I'm applying, and I stay away from the fins, and I use rubber grippers. But in the hidden path and the waves, the nibs don't come out. And I've noticed this throughout my experience with my 150 pen BBS pens that about... 20% maybe don't pull out and there's no consistency rhyme or reason as to which do and do not To me if I really had to pull the nib I would heat up with warm water The outside of the nib assembly to expand it and I think that would loosen up the nib But I'm not going to go through that now. I've cleaned these up I'll Reassemble them and they'll be ready for ink So here's some pens that we're going to compare the first ones is we'll look at my two pen BBS hidden path pens, the 480 and the 456. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly the same resin. There's always going to be a lot of variations in the resin, so again, no pieces will be identical. And what else do we have in a checkerboard? This is a beautiful. M600S in the green version. There's also a blue version which we'll look at next in a full wind pen. I just find this pattern to be very, very nice, very interesting. Uh, the full wind pen is a, certainly a, another design to incorporate that checkerboard pattern of the resin. I do like all the colors, but it looks like Pen BBS is only going to be using one of them. Next, we're going to look at Waves versus South Shore. Similar. I'd say pretty close to identical. So it's interesting that they put a different number on it because of the white ends, but I find uh, the whole model numbering system to be a little bit interesting that Pen BBS uses. And I think we need to explore the black tortoise on its own with some different lighting. Well, many people have asked about how transparent this resin is, and I'd say it's a little bit, not a lot. I don't have as much of a dark room as I would like, but you can see that that light does go through. You know, there's your nib and feed. We go down to the barrel, we'll see also that light coming through. There's the rod, there's the vacuum piston. If we take off the cap, and we have the LED go into the cap, you'll see it's fairly transparent. I just think it's a very nice resin. There seems to be a little bit of color there, just not a diluted black, at least to my eyes. But then, as we talked about, I'm a little bit colorblind. But hopefully this works for you so you can see the qualities of this resin. Now that it's a little bit darker, I thought it would be time to bring in the x-ray light to play on these resins. There is an interesting amount of pearlescence in the hidden path and also in the waves, but obviously not in black tortoise. And as we can see, black tortoise is fairly transparent. We go into waves and it's also some transparency there. It's more, you know, not as transparent as the tortoise, but then if we go into Hidden Path, we'll also see some transparency. So I expect both waves in Hidden Path, in addition to 
black tortoise, you'll be able to see the ink level in the pen after you fill it up. Uh, another example of three excellent resins that Pen BBS uses. These three four, five, sixes, when I first received them, the threading of the cap was just a little bit wonky. It's still not perfect, but what I noticed was there were bits of uh, plastic, small bits of plastic in the thread, so I used a brush to get rid of those. I used a brush inside the cap, blew everything out with compressed air, and then I put a little bit of silicone grease on the threads. But I would say that that's about as good as it's going to get. It just doesn't feel as good as, as I would like. A few people, Doug and some others, have had issues with cracking here where this metal piece meets the plastic of the barrel. And I would say that's a trait of this design or any design like this. I've had other pens break there. So what you have is, is you have two materials with completely different coefficients of expansion. The metal probably contracts and expands more due to temperature changes than the plastic barrel would, and that puts pressure. So if the metal expands more than the plastic, it's going to put pressure on that, and that could cause cracking or breaking. But again, it's just a nature of the beast. There's nothing we can do about it without changing the design drastically, and I don't think that Pen BBS is going to do that. A wonderful two-tone nib. We're just having some diffuse sunlight coming in, so you can see how that transparent section shows you the feed and the, and the nib. And I think it would be good to be able to see that level of ink, and I think this will be able to do that. You might need a light, but it's doable. I like the resin. You may ask, Chris, how many Pen BBS 456 pens do you have? And I would say 17. I bought 18, gave one away, so that brought me down to 17. Here are 16 of them here in numerical order based on the number that Pen BBS is assigned to the resin that the pens have. I have two clears, so the second clear is not here because it's the same as this one except different ink in it, different nib. It's something I'm playing around with. Here's the list from my Excel spreadsheet showing these models. Their designation, uh, the name of the resin, and some other tidbits. So here on the far left is Summer, the clear one. This is an excellent vermouth with the matte gold trim. Autumn billows with a clear barrel. And here's Infinity with a clear barrel. And that also has the matte gold trim. This was bought on Etsy from a, a pen seller. I bought a few pens from. This may be a Franken pen. I'm not certain. Then we have Smog. Here we have Dawn, an interesting resin. Symphony, a great resin. Sea of Ice. Another nice resin, kind of in the same family as Summer, but just a different design, more of a cracked ice, and this is a swirl design. And then we have Waves, Hidden Path, Dark Paint, which is a black version of Smog that has black uh, swirly in it versus a white swirly in it. And then we have Dark Tortoise, and this is that excellent Pen BBS Limited Edition fan pen. So these are a phenomenal range of finishes, colors, a little bit different trims. There's a lot of different nibs here. Yeah, I just phenomenal. I mean, I just find it uh, amazing that one pen maker could make this many varieties of this model of pen, and this is probably half of them that they've made. Who knows? I wouldn't even know how to list all of the four, five, six models. If somebody has a list, I'd be more than happy to, to show it or promote it. I think that would be excellent. Or a list of any one model of Pen BBS and all the different finishes it comes in. Let's look at something interesting also in this list. Here we have the Dawn, one of my earlier acquisitions. And it has a round fine nib, interesting engraving. It's kind of preceded the medium, round medium nib that they made a little bit later. It looks like there might be a slight upturn 
but it certainly is different than their standard fine nib. Let's compare. Here's Symphony, which has that two-tone in it. And yes, there is a definite difference between the upturn between those two. Just amazing that they do make some varieties of nibs, just not very much and not very often and not easy to find sometimes, but interesting the way that they've identified and stamped these two different nibs. It's like two different makers. Another nice feature of Pen BBS. Well, you may have guessed that I would ink up this Waves version. I do like those round medium nibs and I wanted to give this one a try. I always keep the blind cap open. I've learned that with the 456 and the 355. I don't travel with the pens. They sit on my desk. So this avoids having to remember to open up the blind cap when I write. And also keeps the nib wetter, I think. The nib will dry out if you isolate it from ink because no matter how well a cap seals, maybe the 376 a slip seal is better, but you're going to get some drying. We'll just go through a quick review of, of this 456 design. You know, the cap comes off, like I said, about one and a quarter to one and a half turns. It fits very nicely in the hand. It feels good in the hand. Ergonomically, this is one pen that just hits the sweet spot for me. This section is about as small as I like, but it has a nice curve to it, so you can move your fingers around and get a different grip on it and I like that. That reduces fatigue during long writing for me. And the other thing that makes the 456 good writer is it posts fine. You feel that cap but it, it doesn't change the balance much. You know I would still write with it unposted but that's just my preferences. We'll give you the dimensions of that section. We'll give you the lengths of the pen and we'll give you the weights. Now let's see what ink I put in here, and then let's see how that nib puts that ink on paper. I chose this ink. As I mentioned, uh, I've been uh, trying to use up a lot of ink, so I have, you know, a lot of ink. So something I haven't used for a while, and I was in a blue mood, so... This is one of the first really intense blues that I really fell in love with. I know a lot of people like Compeki, but not on my list. Let's put that nib on paper. I wanted to write with the 456 Dawn, which has that round, fine nib. Very low on ink. The pen's going to be flushed out and cleaned after this video, but I just wanted to show you there is a, a definite significant difference between that round, fine and the round, medium. The round, medium is definitely a, a generous medium, and I think this fine is right on the money for a fine nib. Both of these are very, very smooth, very easy to write with, and, and lay down a decent amount of ink. Obviously, the medium lays down more ink. As one of my favorite pen reviewers would say, ink acquiring minds ask, how well did that Dawn 456 clean up? Because it looked pretty messy during the writing. And as you can see, it cleaned up very, very well. No ink stains whatsoever. I used this wrench. It's uh, uh, 1764 so that just fits perfectly. Let you unscrew this uh, vac assembly. There's uh, two O rings there. I did a full thing on exploring uh, taking these apart. 
pull the nib and feed out. That's where most of the ink collects. And if you're going to change inks or clean out a pen for storage, that's where you need to really work on them. And I pulled out the nib collar and this O-ring, and there's still just a tad bit of ink in the threads. I silicone grease all the threads, which is great to seal up everything and to make it easy to disassemble. But the silicone grease can collect ink and make it a little bit harder to clean out. But I think that's well worth it for what the benefits are. So it did clean up well, and it's ready to be re-inked when I'm ready to do that. One of the things that I noticed is this white resin when I filled the pen was a little bit difficult to get all the ink off of it. And I think you may have a staining issue with that with some inks. So one ink that I've stopped using is Irosajuku because I've had staining issues with it. It stained a Franklin Christoph pen of mine and also it uh, completely destroyed um, a latex sack and a vintage pen in, in about a month. So the ink is known for can be highly alkaline and highly alkaline can have uh, impact on certain pen materials. So I'm relegating it to only using it with uh, standard converters and modern pens, but I'm certain I have enough of those to keep me using my Irishizuku ink. So let's rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.6. It gets two checks for the nib because it's really a nice nib. It gets one check for the design, build, construction, and it gets one check because the vac filling system works really nicely. Um, I got about a half a fill. I didn't go for more. I think you can you can see the ink level through the uh, resin, which is nice. The ink level's right about here. As I get my finger in the frame. So hopefully you've enjoyed this review of uh, the Pen BBS Model Four Five Six and the three new ones that I've added to my growing collection. We've come to the end of this video. So thank you all for watching. May you have many great writing experiences and find a nib and pen and ink and paper that you love and get you to write. Because that's what it's all about. I hope all of you are staying safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying life. Enjoying your pens. We've reached the end of this video. And we're going to say bye. There may be a few more before the end of 2020. There's only two days to go. And I do enjoy writing with this pen. And I like the ink. Bye.